Hey everyone, I'm going to be referencing an opinion piece out of the CBC News, and it's in it's from the Manitoba section. Opinion: Is there actually an alt left? That's the question. <laughs> Believe it or not, despite Trump's claims, the so-called alt left is a figment of the very real alt right's imagination, and this is being presented by Louis Philippe. Rochon, a contributor to the CBC, but to suggest that there's no such thing as just a figment of the imagination is to suggest that this person hasn't been paying attention at all of how things have unfolded for the last few years, right? Where, where did you ever hear? I mean, just go look through historical documents. Where did you hear anything about the alt-right prior to the last year or so, right? Never existed, but you heard lots about Antifa. You heard lots about, you know, Black Lives Matter. You heard plenty about the Black Bloc or the Communists or the Socialists, right? Or the LGBTQ community, rights activists, right? I mean, these are people would all identify, if you ask them yourself, they predominantly, or the majority of them would all identify on the left side of the political spectrum, right? And these are the ones that have been using violence as a means to an end, Predominantly, some of them not, some of them have been, been peaceful, but I mean, if you look throughout, you know, all the Black Lives Matter, right, all the, all the destruction, you know, all the, the, the beatings, the violence, the burning of cars, right, you know, picking up garbage bins and throwing them out into the streets, if you look at all the people that have been punching Nazis, right, or people that they seem to oppose ideologically, even though they're very closely aligned in reality, because they're both collectivists, they're both groups that predominantly um, support the collective narrative, the collective ideology, right? But yes, we all know, I mean, like I say, anyone's been paying attention, or even if you look at these First Nations people that have been using violent protests, or impeding and restricting, you know, commerce, or the pipelines, these are people that they too would identify as progressives or leftists, right? Communists or socialists that promote those, ideo those ideals and that ideology. So to suggest, like I say once again, that's, that's a, this is a weird time we're living in where you have an opinion piece here where it's trying to put forth a narrative to suggest that the alt-left left is a figment of the imagination and the alt-right is what's real, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, the alt-right, as you, you know yourself, if you've been paying attention, you know yourself, this is a new phenomenon, right? It's, it's, it's the newest of all the identity politics. It's the newest subgroup that has even been talked about and had any stage presence from the establishment media. You know, these are people that have basically been overlooked and ignored, and I guess now that they're frustrated all the fuck and have gone totally like overboard, which is what a lot of these fucking uh, ideologues do. And now they're getting the attention, but now they're trying to, the, the media, a lot of people in the media are trying to point forth this new phenomenon. Oh no, these were the ones that were started this shit all along. Really? Really? Obama had nothing to do with all this uh, sexism or racism, all this, you know, the, the eight years he was in office and all the fucking shit that he did, that had nothing to do with it? No, not at all? No, it only happened since Trump, huh? Well, how the hell did Trump become so popular? And how did he go against all the, what was it, 13 other Republicans and even defeated Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton? How did that all happen? Seems quite reactionary. Seems like it's a powerful force, no doubt, that a lot of these people on the left, yes, you very well should be fearful now because you see that, yes, especially a lot of the, uh, the silent majority, they seem to be uh, aligning with some of these right-wingers, right? So, you know, they've spoken, and I understand why you're probably fearful at this point, because it's like, oh, damn, we've woken the beast now, right? Now we got people thinking and paying attention. Shit, right? I guess that's probably a lot of the thought process that's going on. So let's, let's try to create a whole new narrative and try to counteract this, this new rise and try to paint them as being the original culprits and the reason why there's such <laughs> divisiveness 
and identity politics it's happening but like i say you never seen that happen from the right wingers you know exactly where it come from you know exactly what media outlets you know exactly what media pundits put forth presented all this political identity bullshit right and sub and Deviant off the population into these subgroups, right, of identity politics. You know who did this. You know exactly who did this. And it weren't predominantly these right-wing conservatives, especially. This is all reactionary. But let's just read into this article and see what this, uh, see what this person is trying to say. You know, I, I always, I love to hear the kind of narratives they put forth present because it speaks volumes. If you know how to read between the lines, it speaks way more than just the words on the page. U.S. President Donald Trump recently asked about the role of the alt-left in the Charlottesville riots. Since then, many pundits have talked about the alt-left. While the term has started to see some use, the question needs to be asked, is there actually an alt-left? Much has already been written and discussed about the American alt-right movement and its role in bringing Donald Trump to power. It is often characterized as angry, racist, fascist, bigoted, homophobic, misogynist, and gun-loving. It is generally acknowledged that on almost every economic, social, and political issue, its members are to the far right of the American right with open displays and references to Nazism and the KKK. So once again, total, like, like I say, even this person, the way they're writing this, totally collectivist, right? Painting everyone with a broad brush as if to suggest... <laughs> that everyone that supports Trump. I mean, just listen to the kind of narrative, the kind of dialogue that people like this put forth present. And ask yourself, is this not someone that's completely, you know, a collective narrative, right? As a means to an end? Well, you know damn well, I mean, it's right there in black and white. In light of this, many have begun to ask whether there is, in fact, an equivalent on the left. Indeed, there is an increasing tendency to identify this alt-left, if it exists, as a way to counterbalance the American alt-right, especially since the term was used by Trump during an August 15th press, conferences, press conference following the violence in Charlottesville. And this thing with Charlottesville, I mean, I'm totally against it, right? And feel terrible for that poor woman that died. And anyone else that was injured from that one dude in a car. But look at what they've done. Just It only took one time. I mean, you have to go all the way back to for when they talk about these right-wingers and stuff. You have to go all the way back, like what? Five, six, seven years. Some of them are even going all the way back to the Oklahoma bombing to paint right-wingers as being these dominant fucking terrorists and, and violent groups. It's like, Really? You're not paying any attention to all the hell what's been happening. Like, there's so much video out there. It's like, you have to be fucking literally closing your eyes and putting a blindfold on to not at least recognize that it's been the left that have been the most violent and oppressive predominantly. Look on the university campuses. Look at people like Milo or, or even Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson. They can't even get a chance to speak without these leftists fucking using... Uh, preemptive violence or threats of violence against them for even just speaking right just speaking just using words right in fact there is now a growing and influential podcast the chapo trap house often described as an alternative to the breitbart news advocates have pointed to the strength of candidates on the left like jeremy corbyn in the uk bernie sanders in the u.s and jean luc Melanchon in France, who in the last elections ended up doubling the support he obtained in the previous vote, but also to demonstrators and activists willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the alt-right as proof of a steadily rising alternative to the provocative alt-right movement. No, these are people that, like I said, they've already been the ones out there. We've seen these black masks, these balaclava wearing, these fucking bandana wearing, these ones that keep putting masks on their face and carrying their black and white fucking, or black and red flags, or their Antifa fucking symbols or flags. These are the people we've seen long before, or like I say, Black Lives Matter and that gentleman that stood on the rooftop and killed a bunch of cops, right? Or, or the fact that they've used violence towards you know, storefronts or store owners or businesses in their community just because, what, they're, they're pissed off at, oh, a white cop killed someone. And listen, I'm on, especially if you're a part of Black Lives Matter or against authoritarian cops, hey, I'm totally with you. But it's like, 
you do realize that these fuckers are the same ones that are going to enforce the edicts of the state of, for your opponents. They're the same motherfuckers that will screw with people, even if you gain some position of authority. You just look to take over and use them to counter your opponents, right? People like myself, libertarians, you know, voluntarists, critical thinkers, we're saying, hey, listen, listen, listen. Stop looking to use the gun in the room, which is government, as a means to an end. If you're truly against government and bad cops, then stay that way. We'll meet you there. As a matter of fact, we're already there with you. But once again, we're seeing time and time again, it's not re they're not really against that. They're just about making those institutions and those entities work for them on their behalf. That's really what they're pissed off about. It's not that they're really against oppressing people. They're just being against being oppressed themselves. They will definitely use these cops or these institutions or these government fucking... Um, entities against other people that they deem to be their opponents right they have no qualms whatsoever using violence or oppressive means against their their counterparts but they just don't like to see it used against them reject these fucks just like some of these really far-right extremists or fucking idiots like this chris can't well listen you fucking stupid dumbass you chose to go and sell your fucking you, you used to identify as a libertarian although in reality you called yourself predominantly an anarchist which i'm very glad because stop uh, uh, just enough with you fucking dipshits even trying to soil what libertarian is all about right but i'm very glad that this piece of shit's going to recognize and going to have to suffer the consequences for his fucking stupid shit right you want to go full fucking retard can't well you dumbasses especially some of you fucks on the alt right listen Go do your thing. By all means, hey, listen, do your fucking thing you're going to anyways. But just don't fucking identify with any one of us that are actually fighting for true liberty for everybody. The ones of us that don't give a fuck about race or sex, right? We're about the individual and respect and liberty for everyone. Don't fucking try to identify with us. Say with you leftists. You know, if you were like a, a proper liberal, right? Or what they would consider a, like... A genuine progressive, I guess, right? Although, once again, you get into that collective ideology, it's like, I don't know how you square that round peg. But if you're truly what you would consider, like, you know, a progressive, as far as progressing humanity properly, then you should be the first ones at the fucking, you know, at the line, screaming out in opposition to these fuck sticks that are supposedly destroying any credibility of what it means to be on the left. But you're not seeing that much now. You start to see a little squeaking now, but only three, like Nancy Pelosi or a few others. But why? Oh, yeah, you got midterms coming up. So it's all political posturing. None of them are really willing to do the right thing just because it's morally or philosophically or intrinsically proper, right? No, no, it's all about political posturing and political positioning. Just like this fucking idiot writing this thing. But yeah. I'm not even going to read any more of this article. You know, I'm tired of even giving these fuckers even the slightest time of day. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video below. But basically, I just wanted to point out the fact that, you know, these idiots that try to write this kind of bullshit narrative, this kind of dialogue, that try to, to make everything on the right politically as being, oh, they're the worst, they're the worst, and, and all the people on the left, oh, they're, they're saints, right? They never do anything wrong. This is fucking bullshit. And if this fucking person identifies on the left, which he probably does, right? He should be at the forefront saying, no, I reject all this bullshit. But he's de defending the actions of his counterparts, but trying to play off that he's some benevolent in some way, right? Or trying to at least, you know, distance himself in some way so you know that's another thing with you people that are the violent activists on the left <laughs> this guy's fucking selling you whether you want to admit it or not he's using political double speak right but basically he's selling you up the river river while trying to appease or appeal to you know the centrist or or the silent majority predominantly right or completely countering or going against or opposing those he sees as his political opponents we gotta we gotta point out the blatant hypocrisy and the bullshit put forth and presented by people such as this fucking dipshit, right? It's a Canadian libertarian, and I love liberty.